name is Danica and today I wanted to talk about seven lesbian and bi woman books that were written before The Well of Loneliness. So you might know that I have a Patreon account that is for this channel as well as my Tumblr by Lesbian Literature and The Lesbury, my book blog. And because of the support that I get through Patreon, I've been able to start my Lesbian Literature 101 series, which involves a ton of research, where basically I'm wanting to have a kind of course on lesbian literature, queer woman literature throughout time. So I've been researching queer woman lit that was published before 2000 and hopefully as far back as I can get. I've been loving doing this research. I'm finding out all sorts of things that I hadn't heard of before. It's a little frustrating that I haven't heard of it before because queer woman lit is my passion and I have been reading about it and writing about it and making videos about it for many years now so it's frustrating that it's so hard to find some of these things that were groundbreaking and that are really important in the history of queer lit. The Well of the Loneliness by Radcliffe Hall was published in the 1920s and it's often credited as the first lesbian novel and it definitely is hugely important in LGBTQ lit and especially in sapphic lit and argue translate but the way it's talked about kind of erases a lot of the things that came before it for one thing several lesbian novels were published in French before the well of loneliness came out and also sapphic poetry did not end with Sappho there's a long history of lesbian poetry that also predates the well of loneliness including Wu Tsao's poetry in China which was written in the 1800s and she was quite a famous respected poet at the time who openly wrote about her love of women so beyond that, here are seven queer women books that were written before The Well of Loneliness. The first was written in 1900 and it was Some Portrait Sonnets of Women by Natalie Clifford Barney. Natalie Clifford Barney hosted literary salons in Paris from the 1900s to 1920s and that was the place to be in queer literary history. She wrote poetry about her love of women, which she knew would be quite scandalous, but she considered scandal the best way to keep away nuisances, nuisances being male suitors. 500 copies of this book were published. They were illustrated by her mother, who was not aware that the women she was painting were her daughter's lovers. When word got out to the newspapers about the content of the book, Natalie Clifford Barney's father bought up the remaining copies and burned them. Second up, in 1901, Sapphic Idol by Leanne de Pauji was published. And as far as I've been able to tell so far in my research, this was the first lesbian novel published. Leanne was one of Paris's most beautiful and notorious courtesans, and I'm going to quote Wikipedia in her meeting of Natalie Clifford Barney. In 1899, after seeing de Pauge at a dance hall in Paris, Barney presented herself at de Pauge's residence in a page costume and announced that she was a page of love sent by Sappho. Although de Pauge was one of the most famous women in Paris at the time, constantly sought after by wealthy and titled men, Barney's audacity charmed and seduced her. They went on to have a passionate relationship which ended when Natalie Clifford Barney wanted to save her from being a courtesan. They remained close and they both ended up writing thinly veiled fictionalized accounts of their relationship. Barney's was letters to a woman I have known and it did not find a publisher and she later denounced it as being unskilled. De Pauge had a big success with hers however and it was reprinted 69 times in its first year. De Pauge's biography Jean Chalon argued that the content of the book was essentially a condemnation of the love of men, though it's also been interpreted as painting lesbianism as morbid. Unfortunately, even though this is either one of or the first lesbian novel ever published, there has never been an English translation of it, which I find extremely frustrating. Next up in 1903 is QED, or Things As They Are, by Gertrude Stein. Now this one was written in 1903, but it wasn't actually published until 1950. This is another thinly fictionalized account of a real-life relationship of the author, and this was between three women. Gertrude Stein did publish other things with lesbian themes in that time, but they tended to be pretty difficult to read. They were dense literary works, and it kind of was protected by that. People didn't always understand that they were reading a lesbian work, and Stein was reluctant to publish QED. It wasn't released until after her death because it was so explicitly lesbian. In 1906 was An Anglo-American Alliance by Gregory Kasparian, which was the first lesbian science fiction novel. This was written by a man, and at first it could be argued 
previewed to fit inside the romantic friendship genre, but it eventually stretches beyond that because their relationship is so passionate that they hide it from other people, they refuse to have relationships with men, they make an oath to have their souls united until death. The good news is they get to be together at the end of the book. The bad news is it's only because one of the women goes through a mental and physical metamorphosis through magical means to become a man. You can read it for free online, but do be warned that there is apparently a lot of racism in the text. In 1912 there was more lesbian poetry being published, and that's Pictures of the Floating World by Amy Lowell. This collection contains love poetry to other women. I don't know why the poetry that was published before 1950 isn't really talked about in lesbian literature history, or at least I hadn't heard of it before doing this research. Maybe it's because poetry doesn't get as large a readership, or maybe it's because people didn't quite as easily understand the content. Amy Lowell had a relationship with Ada Russell that was often described as a Boston marriage, but she wrote this poem for their 10-year anniversary. A decade. When you came, you were like red wine and honey, and the taste of you burnt my mouth with its sweetness. Now you are like morning bread, smooth and pleasant. I hardly taste you at all, for I know your savor, but I am completely nourished. She also wrote poetry about other women in previous collections, but this is the collection where she stopped trying to hide it. And you can also read this one online. Next up in 1920 was Two Virgins in the Attic by Nobuko Yoshia, and this is a name that I am also very frustrated that I didn't know prior to this because she sounds amazing. She is basically the pioneer of the class S genre in Japan, which as far as I can tell involves strong bonds between schoolgirls, which are often dismissed as juvenile, and as not being true romance or sexuality. This was very influential for shoujo manga. She wrote a ton of these, and she was prolific, she was popular, and she ended up very wealthy. She was a lesbian herself, and she lived with her partner for 50 years. Because they couldn't get married, she actually adopted her partner so that she would have the legal rights of family. Two Virgins in the Attic is different from her other works because it's not about schoolgirls, it's about women. And it also ends with the two women moving out of their dormitory and staying together as a couple, which really challenges the idea that this kind of relationship is only acceptable between young girls as a stage before adult heterosexuality. Unfortunately, again, I don't think you can read this currently in English. After that, in 1923, On a Grey Thread by Elsa Goodlow. This was five years before Well of Loneliness made its public appearance, and this was openly lesbian poetry being published in the US. It seems to have gone completely under the radar. Goodlow said the publisher never commented on the love poems all being addressed to women, and neither did anyone else. So these were a few of the books that I've discovered that had sapphic content that were written written before Well of Loneliness. If I included letters or journals, of course Anne Lister would be included in that. The reason that I'm doing the Lesbian Literature 101 series is because I feel like queer lit in general, but sapphic literature in particular, is really hidden in history. It wasn't until I read Inseparable Passion Between Women by Emma Donahue that I really saw how love stories between women have existed throughout basically the entire history of the written language, but they're not talked about. We don't hear about them. They're covered up. I wanted to bring a little more recognition to those because it made such a huge difference to me to really see that this history is long. So I want to be able to share that. I'm still in the initial research phases, but I am posting little tidbits as I discover them on my Patreon page. So if you want to support the Lesbian Literature 101 project or this channel or the Lesbury or my Tumblr, if you want to support me on on Patreon. Anyone who pledges two dollars or more a month gets entered to win a lesbian or bi woman book every month. I do a giveaway monthly and we're only I think just about ten dollars short of the two hundred dollar mark which means that I will start doing two giveaways every month so you'll have twice the chances to win. Also this video was originally a book riot post so I will link that below if you want to check it out in written form and thank you for watching.